Yo, what up, guys? Besides, here with a champion guide for one that raid players do not like very much. I want to test this champion out because I've had him in a long time, but I've not had the opportunity to use him in any content because he wasn't needed. So when the City of Centrinos came out, I found a stage where he was actually needed. Vlad is his name, Vlad the Nightborn. He was released in pairs along with another champion who probably deals more damage than he is. So he felt like the supporting role for that other champion. His counterpart is known as the Dayborn from that's gonna be from the Sacred Order faction. Where is he? Constantine the Dayborn. See, he Vlad the Nightborn and Constantine the Dayborn. Their skills and abilities have some passive where they complement each other when they are in the same team. So when players judge them, they don't judge him based on that. Constantine is supposed to be damage dealer. Why him, Vlad, is supposed to be the support? They don't just release two champions doing the same high amount of damage at the same time. No, I think Constantine with the fiery blade was the, supposed to be the damage dealer. Why Vlad was supposed to be the supporting and controlling character. So that's why, that's how I'm going to build him. That's how I'm going to use him. If you try to make this champion be your best damage dealer in raid you might you know people say according to the, the reviews you find right here they say he's not that great because maybe they are judging him as a damage dealer but i'll tell you as a supporting character in raid he's gonna be amazing let me tell you how he supports that's his a2 skill right here that you know has a 75 percent chance when booked is a hundred percent chance of stealing the tometer but not just from just any enemy to be only from banner lord secret order and high elves faction champions he has something against or this faction i has something against those three other factions so still it means he will get those tomitas to himself which makes him get his thumb really, really fast now if those three factions are not on the enemy team he will still reduce the tomita by 50 percent but those tomitas uh, removed or um, reduced will not be added to him for other factions right so it's still a good skill Despite it being so wordy and long to read, just know that that's the Tomita decrease 50%. Now, if you do find Secret Order Banner Lords or High Elves, it's an additional Tomita feel for yourself. So, most players might want to bring him against specific faction like that, but it's too, you know, that detail is too, you know, little to focus on. So, just see this as a 50% Tomita decrease. AoE wants to all the enemies who have their Tomita decrease. Looking at this, it means this champion will be required to have, you know, like, accuracy to learn that it's not like he it cannot be resisted or anything no it still needs accuracy this not just reduce tomita it will also place a leech debuff the leech is not a debuff that we'll find in arena most of the time we'll see leech mostly in pve content against bosses against wave content that's why you normally see this leech that's why people are confused where should this champion be used well everywhere you think you need tomita reduction and leech that's where this skill can come in but i am seeing it as a skill to be used against wave content now check out his a3 skill that also has block active skills this is the key part and the decreased defense skill that makes you think that this champion was meant to be a supporting role for the other his brother right there so with decreased defense being landing on the enemies that he brings and block active skills it means that his other counterpart if you have both of them can look extremely harder with decreased defense for the enemies so being any champion that is coming right here with decreased defense it feels like he should be built and supporting role and but his damage is based on attack so it feels like he should also be built with 100 percent crit rate and 200 300 um, percent crit damage but if you try to do that his accuracy will be low so to debuff enemies in raid with decreased defense and block active skills, you will need that accuracy banner. You might need that accuracy chest. You might need the substats for your amulet to be accuracy substats also. So that will make your decreased defense and block active skills land a lot more. So if you're looking for that decreased defense champion, AOE decreased defense, you don't want to use your Stagnite and Tyrell. You, know, you don't want to use those War Maiden. He comes in there as one of those champions that can do that. Fine. Legendaries who have decreased defense always have something al along with it that's why it has this block artist skills if you know anything about block artist skills it means that enemies who have their a2 a3 those are active skills they cannot use it for two entire turns it feels like a stun but they can still use their a1 skill so it feels like you're telling them to be frozen or you're telling them to to be provoked that's what block active skill feels like so their active skills enemies when this padlock little padlock is placed on their heads you see that they cannot use their active skill they'll only be using their a1 so it's like a crowd control champion from the tormentor you just saw from the a2 and this skill it will make sure the enemies are only using their a1s 
or having their turn so reduced that they will not get a turn fast so if you know this about this champion my question is why are you trying to build him with 100 percent crit and 350 crit damage and 100 accuracy you should always build this champion with enough accuracy to do this is two skills i just read out for you so in my team i'll be showing you a build that i'll be using this champion as a supporting role as a support champion you know so whatever you can build artifact sets you put on him to achieve these two roles depends on you i'm thinking first of all perception but i'll show you his builds whenever you want when we go to the um, artifact build so that's the first thing i saw, saw about this champion now if i'm wrong about any of this please correct me in the comments below let me know how you use this champion is it still good as a damage dealer while having support abilities i can think of one champion like hondig who also have support capabilities like tometer reduction and debuffing that also does big nukes so there are champions who can do both both debuffing and capability and also damage capability so he might be one of those few ones but so far in raid his reviews are not looking so well but if you're looking for these two type of things he's demand for you so i just wanted to put out this video to hype him up a little bit not as a pure damage dealer that should be used everywhere in arena and all that but as more of a supporting role champion who is there for block artist skill Drake's defense and turn meter reduction definitely not a content not a not a debuff source content that you know want in content like the hydra so i'll be testing him out in general dungeon content or maybe a few arena battles to see whether this build can work in that content so he also has a perfect veil buff on himself for two turns what does it do does it benefit anything from perfect veil maybe to keep himself alive a little bit longer to do these wicked skills but let me see places revive on dead buff on this champion for two turns every time this champion kills an enemy this feels like he wants to be a damage dealer so bad but with his damage being based on attack with 100% crit rate he will definitely take out some enemies over time but also feels um fully heals this champion and fills the atom meter by 50% every time they kill an enemy so he will get healed up but this skill is also saying it will only happen when Constantine the Dayborn is on the same team I want to use him in battle without Constantine to see if he kills an enemy if he will get his tomato feel and heal happening or it only happens when constantine is in the team this paragraph kind of confuses me and on the a1 finally that's an attack one enemy skill that destroys his own oh destroys the target's max hp by 30 percent of the damage inflicted i can only think of the um there's a boss right here on the doom tower that wants his um uh, his destroy max hp reduced so he can take him down eventually so that's the content where it can be used also heals this champion by 30 percent of the damage inflicted so you have self-healing maybe you don't need um any healing stats on these champions like uh lifesteal or anything just building pure damage i guess so the more damage he does the more healing he does and of course always focus on accuracy first that's your first priority so that's vlad the, the night bond <laughs> i'm always confusing him with day bond if you get his brother the night the day bond you can use two of them together and see how they pair but uh, he will probably be the supporting role while the other one is the damage dealer he's softening up the enemies for the damage dealer to come in there and nuke them and even block revive yes his brother does block revive but we're not here to talk about him i don't even have this, his brother the day born on my account and they are from two different factions he is from the night born which is undead that means he's dead and while his brother is from the sacred order <laughs> which is a like a christian and a, a churchy type of good faction to be in he also has an aura to increase crit rate in all battles so they are not restricting this champion usage to just one content arena or dungeons no he can be used in the leader slot in every content which allows him to be used in the leader slot and boost your allies um, crit rate by 25 percent but this is not a popular aura you find most players using most players come into content with their crit rate already 100 percent they will never really need this aura to be helping them boost crit rate it's not a wise choice all right let me show off my um, vlad the night bomb build it's an old build i did not revamp him for this video is one that i put together a while ago for the purpose of using him in that uh, city of central stage where he was used to fight this the, the wave and that's what i built with him and if you know anything about my early game build i always tell newer players to build this champion in straight up speed because a debuffer like this who needs to go first and place decrease defense need to go fast so you want to go with a one piece of speed set and accuracy set 
or you want to go with triple speed set so you just go super fast and get your accuracy from the chest or banner so these are two beginner sets that you cannot go wrong with your debuffer should definitely go first before your damage dealer so he's there for that decrease defense make him go first not your damage dealer going first before him so that's the two sets that i will recommend for that early game build to help you clearly you can see from his skills to nothing can be used in the clan boss from what you saw his skills are not useful in the clan boss except that niche or the decrease defense the rest are not very useful so he's not a champion that belongs in life still at all except maybe for some content like um faction wars all champions in faction wars deserve to be in life still because they need to self-sustain if they don't have a healer or a reviver in that faction so that's something that to consider two beginner sets before i scroll over to an end game set these days perception is not considered even an end game set i think perception is a set that newer players can get early game and begin to slap this champ on a triple set of perception to make him get towards that accuracy requirement depending on the content you're trying to beat whether it's dungeon 200 accuracy for dungeon 20 or you're looking at 25 and above content so where you need about 220 to 225 i mean 250 accuracy depending on the levels you're trying to beat or you're building this champion for arena which will go crazy accuracy requirements like a madam series will do I'm talking about 400 accuracy 300 if you can't meet those numbers and this is the artifact set that makes that happen perception you cannot go wrong with it even with triple roll of perception it has a little bit of speed for you adding um how many percent of speed five percent for for a two-piece set and on speed boots always on champions like this you don't want to go wrong so why did i put him in a relentless set is because i had a lot of relentless lying around and if you know anything about relentless set it allows champions take two tons three tons four tons well not four tons but you know what i mean uh, relentless sets allows champions to take turns when it's not even their turn it can go in with his decrease defense or and weaken land it going with the next a3 and decrease the enemy's turn meter again where is it i'm looking for relentless he's probably at the top did i scroll past it there it is relentless set right here so this is the set hard to obtain because you have to win a lot of arena i mean you have to win a lot of tournament leaderboard to, to get a good ones but i managed to get this one with enough accuracy to land his debuff in dungeon content i don't intend to use this champion in the arena but i will test him out in some battles in that content to see if he's still viable for that content and how it works so but this is what i was looking forward to perception set with accuracy perception set with speed and accuracy perception did i say relentless set i mean with crit rates well i wanted him even if i wanted accuracy and speed i still wanted that 100 crit rate but i ended up at 95 which is totally fine uh, for this level and then crit damage and crit rate just because he's there for debuffing doesn't mean you will not add some damage into him so i managed to get up to 200 and um, percent crit damage while meeting accurate and crit rate requirements at the same time for this random set and then for the chest i went with accuracy for a real damage dealer he goes towards attack percentage on the chest normal damage dealer go towards high attack but here i did not even focus on that i could switch this out for attack but i didn't want to sacrifice that if i even wanted more accuracy i'll go towards um more accuracy on the banner but i just wanted one that has speed and attack and hp so he can self-sustain he's not there to die first and then for speed on the boots as usual and even more crits and what did i do attack finally we got some attack and then crit damage right on the amulet with accuracy substat and attack substat so that's my build right here i'll not forget to show you my total stats of this champion like i said 200 speed is not that fast i should have gone up to 220 to 30 but this is also faster than my damage dealers well not anymore but i'll see his defensive isn't close as high as his <laughs> attack normally you want the attack to go up to like 4k 5k for your damage dealer but it's fine at 36 with 4 and um, 41,000 hp right here 95 crit rate 218 crit damage this is moderate damage he's not coming there with no damage at all he's coming there with a little bit of damage to prepare the enemies for the final looking and no resistance focused on but accuracy is very well focused on all right check out his masteries these masteries are a standard pve masteries this is not a pvp mastery at all you can check out l hate's website for more mastery options if you intend to use this champion for the arena this is not an arena mastery as you can see him focusing a lot more on accuracy and going in with this war master for 
boss hits maybe so that's what i built him in that master is for not a pvp master is. so because of that let me see his blessing i don't have a blessing but for an accuracy champion like this you probably want to go towards brimstone so you can land some brimstone hits on some bosses let's head over to the first content i'll test vlad in is always the arena i want to see if he's it. one of those champions that can help you clear your campaign farming because that's one content that we farm every day and depending on whether he's your first legendary whether you can use him in that content he's a1 no that's his first aoe skill his second aoe skill he started with the a3 that's it he put that revive on death on himself and that skill came around so fast he used it again that's a 10 second campaign farmer not that bad I mean, my crit rate and crit damage is a little bit better to be used in uh, this stage. But that's not where we're going to hype this champion for. The content I'm going to hype in for instead is dungeons, where a lot of people might have difficulties going through wave content in that early game, especially. Not the Fire Knight, he doesn't have multiple hits on his A1, definitely. Let me just try him in Dragon, first of all, to better have a better understanding of how it works. I'll put it together a team that probably will die. <laughs> So let's see if he can be the self-sustaining uh, champion that he's supposed to be. Let me put it at one speed so this battle doesn't go too fast. Auto. Decrease defense and weaken. Well, he was supposed to be the champion to place decrease defense and weaken, but somebody is right here doing it. That's a war maiden. I put together squishy champions to see whether he can carry them to victory. Does he start the battle with this decrease defense and weaken? I don't think so. It's A3. Yeah, he starts the battle with the A3. Let me put it on auto and see what he does. So she put the decrease events in some champions. He did it on all of them. It's even landing on this particular champions for three tons, three tons, three tons. I don't know if this is from her or from him, but you can see the block active skills is also on four of them and not on this champion. This means that these four champions will only use their A ones. So all my allies that are standing right here will only take damage from this enemy's A1. So he's not just there to place this decrease events, he's also there to place this block at his skills. After this battle, I'll test the same skill out in the arena to see whether he can neutralize the enemy's threat. Not totally, but see if he can help them in that contest. Let's roll around to his other ability to see when he's gonna use it, which is the Tometer Reduction. Now, against enemies who are of a particular faction, he will steal it. Against enemies who are from other factions, he will just remove it from them. That is Tomita reduction at this. So there are two enemies who currently have their Tomita field. Let's see what happens to them. He got their Tomita reduced, but he did not feel it to himself. By 50%. Just like the skill said, he did reduce their Tomita. And he also put him a perfect build on himself. Which means he will not be the target of any damage. Normal debuffers place debuffs on the enemies and still take damage but he is there he's like no you cannot touch me when he has this perfect veil on himself the enemies cannot target him unless they use their aoe skill but they cannot use their aoe skill because it's currently locked with these huge padlocks you can see on their heads except this champion or except they have an aoe on their a1 all right that's just one i thought i wanted to test out his skills have a better understanding how how it works now i want to see when he kills an enemy what his passive will do he says he's supposed to heal him or something. He's getting the extra tons. Now, let, I don't want him that enemy to die. I want him to be the one to kill that enemy. And because I have that relentless on him, that's why you see he's getting extra tons and doing the padlock again. You see, this initially this champion was not locked. Now that champion is locked. <laughs> so the more tons he gets, the more the enemies get to use only their A1s. This is not a, a stun, this is not a, a freeze that will make them, you know, take reduced damage. So this is a active skill locking debuff. That is not quite popular in raid, but it's still a good way of dealing with enemies. So I was supposed to use that skill on this champion. Let me save it for the next turn. He's going to use it again. I want him to use this, kill this enemy and see what happens. Now, I purposely brought out weak champions along with him so he doesn't, they don't just nook. Right, let me go in, uh, nook this one. He did get the, the heal. So even if his brother is not on the same team, he did get the heal. He did say he's supposed to get him heal and Tomita feel, right? But this time around, it only the heal came around. I saw like 5k, 5k heal for hitting or killing. Oh, was this 
was that hit from the uh, leech? It might be because you know when enemies have a leech on them and you hit them, you get some healing. So I guess this is enough demonstration of his skills, abilities, and what he brings to battle. I just wanted to showcase him here without anybody, you know, outshining him, and that's what this demonstration was for. To show you that you can use this champion to control dungeon waves, which is an early game problem. For end game, let's head over to the arena where you probably want to see whether it can be useful in that team. And yeah, it depends on the arena team you put him together with to examine whether he can shine or not. And your level in the arena, silver, bronze, or gold, early levels or the end game levels. Three arena, maybe. That's not the arena, that's something else. Let's go to the arena and fight a few battles, one or two to see. Hit that refresh, gold five arena going against enemies that we will always want to go first right so instead of using yumeko i will go in there with a champion that will do a similar role as a yumeko which he is let's see recently used there he is so i still have my tomita boosting and i still have my tomita feel increase accuracy to make sure i land that block active skills on anybody now he's not going to remove block debuff buff from them or stone skin which is the new meta in the arena so maybe that's why most people don't want to use him. You can block at his skills, you can place decrease defense if the enemies have stone skins on them. But I don't think the, any of these enemies will have it on them. Yeah. Reducing the cooldown of the enemy skill will always be better than trying to place debuff on them. So let's just boss, buff ourselves up, increase attack, increase our accuracy. And I'll start off with always, he will start off with this block at his skills. That's the padlock we're talking about. This enemy just used their A1. They will all use their A1. They will neutralize their entire threat. They cannot do anything to us. We're totally safe. I'm not even going to nuke them this time around. I want to see him use his Tomita skill. So, he's supposed to just neutralize the threat and only make them use their A1s. And that's, he's working as intended. They'll use their A1s again. See, even the mist, the damage dealer who is supposed to place big bombs on us, use this A1. For two entire turns. It feels like his turn and A1s, if you know anything about them, they don't do as much damage. Except you're dealing with a champion like a Kandarfron who can do. He did 61k damage with, her, with his A1 and puts revive on death on himself. So this champion can be used as a damage dealer. I was about to hype my Kandarfron's A1, which I will use right now to see how much damage he does on a champion who has decreased defense, obviously. 162 okay it's not the same <laughs> kandrophon did 162 crit damage of course he has crit damage buff added to him this champion did not have crit damage buff added to him so i'm not here to compare damage i'm just saying that this vlad definitely can do some damage if you let him so let's go with this a2 and see Tomita decrease he did not fill it up to himself because they are not the right affinities but you can see that his a2 did not nuke the enemies down now if can this a2 probably move them down better so that's the first demonstration let's go against a team that probably look us but let me see against the go second team does it work or does it work only on go first teams you probably put him in stone skin or something that will make him survive the first hit of the enemies if you want to go with a go first team let me also go against this this is a tanky team obviously let me just see i don't want to go against a team that will look easily Alright, that's a very tanky team with big shields across them. This is the second battle I will run. Alright, I just blocked them from placing that unkillable buff on this Lurius. Block active skills. They all got it, including the damage threat, which is the Lurius. Now, my Vlad does have decreased defense on him and decreased attack, which means he's out of the battle for damage. But I will not waste any time this time around and look them down. So I'll not waste any time this time. I just wanted to show that even with a tanky team, with the right accuracy, that's why I brought an increased accuracy champion. I was able to. Did he just cleanse all the debuffs on them? I didn't see what this foolish. I mean, this uh, Python just did. I will do my A1 and end his reign though. So that's Vlad. If you want to use him in the arena, you can see that it's still a valid option. You can pair him with your damage dealer. Or with his brother if you have both of them in the same team and yeah he's not just a pve champion he's one that can also work well in pvp initially people thought he was just gonna be a pvp god because he's a 
void affinity which means that decrease defense and block active skill does not have any force spirit magic affinity it will land as long as you have enough accuracy that's why i paired him with an increased accuracy champion maybe he can even place the block active skills of somebody like a duchess or somebody like a, a crazy uh, champion who has high resistance on her like a what's her name anyways that's my champion guide and showcase for vlad i hope i did justice to him i didn't want to overhype him at the same time i didn't want to say he's totally trash but i found a content where he will be used for me for personally in my account i built him for the corset city in some areas where you need him from the part that particular undead faction or his particular set of skills attack base depending on the and conditions that were met he's helped me in this content so i wanted to showcase him for early game players who are coming in and thinking is this just a champion i will use only in one content like corset city no he's gonna be a crazy good in faction wars definitely worth building in the early game of dungeons definitely worth adding as a decrease defense champion if you want to replace your epics from that type of teams he will cost you books sure sure but if you have no books on him you probably want to remain with your epics for that and um, debuffing abilities now for damage dealing for arena if you don't have any better options, if you don't have the big foolies, you don't have the uh, candlephone, you don't have the hair frags, you don't have the rotos, you can use them as your damage dealer. It's definitely worth building. And yeah, that's what I think about um, what's his face now. Vlad the Nightborn. Let me know in the comments where you use this crazy champion. I know he's not hyped a lot in raid, but I just wanted to highlight him and shine the, sh the spotlight on him in this video today. Hopefully I did justice to him. I'd love to know how else you built yours. Are you going with full savage sets or merciless or even this crazy set we get from this um, uh, this other champion in the Doom Tower. So that's how I built him for PvE content. He's not going to see the light of day in PvP for me. Except maybe one day in the future I decide to rebuild his build to be more end game content arena based. But for now he's going to serve in that city of Sintranos or other content where I want to use it. Alright. Like, subscribe for more daily raid content. I'd love to see you guys in the comment below. Tell me about how you beat your blood. Later, guys.